All right, continuing with our logo mashup project in Illustrator, just to review how I set up my layers, I brought in my original sketch, but I dimmed it by double clicking on the layer to 50%. Dimming it to 50%, and you can dim it more if you like, is called onion skinning. It makes it look like there's tracing paper on top of it so that you can see your clean black vector shapes on top. And then I lock it. I don't want to accidentally select that layer. Locking layers and paths is really important in Illustrator so you can know exactly what you're affecting. And then I was just playing with making some eye shapes, right? And not really knowing if I wanted the eyes to be reversed or full. So then I went and I did a sketch outside of Illustrator. And I put it into my Dropbox. So if I go to the class Dropbox, which you can get the login for and the password from Canvas, or Canvas course, you navigate to the digital art class files, to my flattened TIFF files. You each have a folder here. The last thing I brought in was this. I'm going to download it. And this was something I used on the scanner. Just a JPEG that was an ink sketch over the top of my pencil sketch. But in this ink sketch, and you can see I scanned it at 450 pixels per inch. But you have pixels that are a lot of gray pixels, right? This is not a clean black and white image. But it makes the decision, okay, I want to reverse the eyes. I'm going to have white eyes on these black shapes. And it's basically like cutting it out of paper, making a stencil of, of your line art. And I could very easily invert this too. So how do I clean this up so I can bring it into Illustrator and have it maybe make some of these vector shapes for me? So one way I can do that is to open it up in Photoshop and use some of the skills we've learned in our past projects adjusting the, the value, adjusting the lighting. Basically just cleaning up your raster file. I always scan in color because you'll get a better quality digital image that way. But then I'm going to take away color once I've cleaned it up. So the first thing I do is I make a duplicate, Command-J, so I can always compare it to my original. Then I'm just going to use some of the shortcuts in Photoshop. I go to Image Adjustments, and instead of doing Levels and Color Balance, I'm just going to do Auto Tone. And that's going to force there to be a pure white and a pure black in my image. Then I can go to Adjustment Levels, and I can up those a little bit, increase my highlights, darken my shadows. And you want to get it to the point where it's not perfectly clean because you don't want little debris to mess up the shape you want, right? But that's very different than the scan I brought in. So it's got all these little breaks in it. it makes it look, I kind of like it because it makes it look a little bit like a woodblock print or something. But this is just a sketch. But it also will take any little smudges and it will really darken them too. So if you're really picky about that, you can then go in with your, your brush and use a pretty hard edged, pressure sensitive for size brush. And I'm going to use my tablet here. And paint at 100% opacity with white. So I go back to my defaults to clean up any noise, what we call noise reduction. Yeah, so this is, this is a better image to bring in. Now, the problem is this has white and it has black in it. And I want my logo to just be a black shape. So what do I do? Well, I can duplicate this. I can turn off the layers underneath. And I can select with the magic wand and contiguous turned off all the white, right? And then just hit delete. 
So now this image is just floating black shapes on a white background. It's still full color, so you can see those different pixels. And it actually doesn't matter if I make it grayscale or not before I bring it into to Illustrator. But I will save it as my name, and I'm going to call this a test because this isn't my vector yet. This is just to get there. And it's going to be, I'll call it my Carl logo test. And I'm going to make it a PNG file. So it saves that transparency. Now, why might I also bring it into Photoshop? Well, like I was playing with in Illustrator, I didn't know if I wanted my eyes to be black or white, right? Once I filled in all the shapes I want, I could decide, you know, I want the inverse of this. So I go to adjustments and I just say invert. And that's how it would look as white shapes on black. And then I could decide, okay, I want to erase all the black shapes. But I'm going to turn on contiguous for this, all the outside black shapes, right? And then I might want to give it an outline stroke. And I can do that all within Photoshop before I bring it into Illustrator. And I can make that outline solid black. And I can make it as thick or as thin as I want. But I need it to scale, right? So I can't make it too skinny. So maybe about like that, like a sticker. It also shows me what things I have to erase. Oh, my eraser is only at 65%. I have to get it at 100%. Get rid of these little blips. So do I like that logo better? Oh, let me get this one out of there too. Oh, never mind. Let's <laughs> see. Do I like that logo better or do I like this logo better? Does that make sense? But this could still be um, a shape and I might bring those both into Illustrator. So if I make a duplicate of it and then I rasterize the layer effects, I can then delete all the whites from this. So again, we just want black and white shapes. Actually, we just want black shapes. <laughs> this is it on a white background. What would it look like on a gray background? Sometimes that helps. So I can create a new layer, fill it with 50% gray, see how each of those logo solutions works. There's one. Here's the other. They're quite different. And in a lot of ways, this feels more like a logo. So this might actually be the one I go with. And that's just inverting it. But maybe I don't like the way the shadow works then, because this doesn't look like a shadow. So let's bring those together. Let's steal the shadow from this one. Duplicate that onto its own layer. And let's take away the shadow from this one. I'm going to go back to where I have the the layer effects, because then when I delete it, I'll still have the outline around the drips, and I want that. You see? Maybe I don't need the shadow at all for this one. Or if I do have it, maybe I want it lower down. And maybe I want to just filled in solid black. So I could do that with a layer overlay again. And instead of filling it in with white, fill it in with black. What do you guys think? Shadow or no shadow? No shadow. All right. So then how do I get this back to just being a cutout? Right? Like that. What do I do? Well, I'm going to clean it up a little bit first before I rasterize it. 
No, I'll just rasterize it first. So I'm going to right click rasterize the layer style. And then I can select all the whites. But then I can go in pretty easily now. Use my uh, lasso, hold down shift and add in to all the whites, all this little debris, all this noise that maybe I don't want in the logo. I actually really like doing kind of handmade looking logos. So it's not that digital noise like this is just automatically bad. But you might not want it. Right? And I'm going to do the, the digital artist cowardly way. I'm going to do it both ways. So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to get rid of these layers I know I don't want. And on the duplicate, I'm going to clean up the insides. So there's a few ways I could do that. I could do the lasso and then delete. Or I can just paint it, paint it out with white, and then select it all and delete. I'm not going to try to make it perfect because you shouldn't do logo design in Photoshop. It shouldn't be pixel based. It should be cut out of vector shapes. But this is to give me something to use for Illustrator to use to make vector shapes with. And sometimes you don't know what the best option is until you see it. So I encourage you to kind of sketch it out with ink filling in the shapes you think you want, and then just playing with it in Photoshop. Try inverting the colors. See what's going to have the most impact. Also in Photoshop, we get to do this. We get to make it really small and see if it still reads. Right, And that's important for a logo. A good logo should be clear, should be versatile, should be direct and as simple as you can make it. Simple, clear, and versatile. Now, anything I don't clean up here, I can definitely clean up in Illustrator in a variety of ways. So instead, I'm using Photoshop here as a way of testing things out and seeing what works. I'm going to leave those lines inside the eye because I kind of like the energy of them. In fact, I like them so much, I might copy them over. Duplicate. I copy them over around this eye. Transform, make them bigger. Oh, set that layer to multiply. Nope. Not that, this layer to multiply. Kind of put those lines in on both eyes. So I'm trying to kind of balance out this dynamic Twitter logo into my own thing. All right. So if I'm happy with that, merge these two. Then I select all the whites with contiguous turned off and hit delete. And now I turn off the background and save it. I have test one already. As a PNG, so that's logo test one. This is going to be logo test two as a PNG. So before you spend a lot of time creating shapes in Illustrator, it's good to know exactly the direction you're going in. Like with your animation, it's good to have a plan for logo design. Because Illustrator is too frustrating a program to just improvise with. So these are my two options.
and I get to decide which one I think 